Welcome to my tutorial on the Beach Barone 50H that comes with X-Plane 11 and um, I will show you how to start up the plane from scratch, so from cold and dark. Um, so first of all, to make things easier, we just um, hide the yoke by pressing Y on the keyboard. And now we will uh, directly start it by turning on the battery. It's down here. And uh, we turn the battery on, the L out and the R out. So now um, we already hear a small sound. And we shouldn't take too much time because um, the plane is only running by its own battery now. And if we turn, uh, leave this on too long, the battery could may be empty then. So we should try to start the engines as fast as possible. And uh, we have to do this by um, first turning on the beacon light and the navigation light. These are uh, these both lights. This is the, the beacon lights and the navigation lights are the red light here and the green light there so we can be identified and now um yeah we have to decide which engine we want to start first i decide for the left engine so we turn on the the fuel rich on the left engine this is left this is right so we turn on left now we turn on the fuel boost pump for the left side and we only should leave that on for about five to ten seconds so this should be enough and now we have to hurry up and start the left engine by turning this up as far as possible. Now this should reset itself from 30 to 10. The round per minute should go up to 10 and the fuel flow should stay down because there's not much fuel flow right now. After starting the left engine we can see the small wheel starts spinning. So this small wheel started spinning because this wheel indicates if there's a difference between the rounds per minute of these both engines. So because this engine is running at uh, about 1000 um, rounds per minute and this engine is not running at all, this uh, wheel identifies that there is a difference between the round per minute. If we do the same thing for the other engine, so we start it by putting this up, by putting the fuel boost pump on for about 5 seconds. And then, putting this the engine to start, we have to hold it for a bit. We realize that this goes up as this other engine and this wheel stops spinning because the, r the engines are right now spinning at the same speed. If we lower the fuel flow by putting this down, we can realize that this thing will already start spinning again because uh, the manual press goes up. And the round per minute goes down because there's less fuel. So be sure to always keep this wheel at the same speed. While flying, it could be happened because of wind or because of uh, altitude differences. So that's why it's important to keep this wheel uh, as stable as possible. And um, there's also a thing in the plane that will help us. It's the uh, prop sink. It's down here. And this will try to keep both propellers at the same speed. So right when we're here, we can already uh, also turn on the avionics master. The avionics master will just uh, turn on this whole section right here with uh, the navigation display and the COM and navigation frequencies. Uh, I will do a tutorial on that. So, now that everything important is on, we uh, could um, care about the other lighting. So, for example, the strobe lights is important. The strobe lights will um, uh, turn on strobe lights on the left and the right side of the wing that will, uh, yeah, at night are important to show where we are right now. And uh, the floodlight, yeah, you can turn on or not. And the panel light, for example, this will uh, highlight uh, all the backgrounds. So if you're flying at night, it's dark, you can use that. The um, taxi light is for taxiing around at the airport. We won't gonna do that right now, so it's not important. I show that in another tutorial. And the landing light is uh, for flying. I will also cover that in another tutorial. 
The last light we haven't turned on yet is the ice light, and the ice light will indicate uh, that we have turned on anti-icing, because uh, if you turn on anti-icing, some areas of the plane may be hot. So, for example, at the front, at the engines, or at, at the wings, or the sh uh, windshields. So, it's important uh, to turn on the ice lighting, so everyone else knows that there may be areas hot, so they don't touch in the plane. So, um, because uh, we need the anti-icing, because anti-icing is important at every time, because in higher altitudes it could get um, really, really cold. So, uh, yeah, we turn on the anti-icing panel, and yeah, that's pretty much it. There's a the last thing, the petard heat. And the petard heat is, um, the petard is a small uh, pipes at the airplane that will indicate the airspeed. So they indicate how much air comes through and then calculate the speed, uh, which we can we see up here. The problem is if it gets colder, the petards could um, freeze. And um, so to prevent that, we turn on the petard heat. So um, yeah, it won't freeze and we get an airspeed. Uh, because other pilots in real life already forgot to turn that on, uh, there were problems where a lot of people died because they get get wrong airspeeds and then uh, yeah crash. So uh, just um, remember always turn on petard heat and it will be also be indicated by um, this small uh, light that says petard. So you know you have petard heat turned on. And yeah, that's pretty much it. So uh, right now you are pretty ready to uh, start. And there are some instruments that are important to know about. Uh, I will cover some up right now. So as you already tell, this is uh, the air speed indicator. It's right now at zero because we're not moving. Uh, important to say is that the red stripe uh, at uh, 85 marks the minimum takeoff speed. The blue stripe marks the best air, uh, takeoff speed. And the, the white stripe from 75 to 120 marks the area where the flaps should be used. So um, the flaps are down here. And last but not least, the green uh, the green part shows uh, the best airspeed and the uh, yellow part shows uh, if you are too fast and 260 is definitely too fast for this airplane. This is the horizon that shows you how many degrees you go up and how many degrees you go down. This is your uh, altimeter, so it will show you how how far you are above the sea level. It's a small uh, barrow button down there. You can adjust your uh, airport height. So, for example, if you are in the uh, like, for example, in the Himalaya, we are way far further up than right here. We are at the sea level right now. That's why uh, we we are at zero. So we turn that to zero. Always look up the um, height of your airport and you see uh, right there, it will give you a number and you will just turn it in there. It's important that you know how high you are really above the ground. Uh, this is uh, a marker that shows you how far you flying up and how far you're flying down. You can see that it says 1000 feet per minute. So if we, uh, this thing is up there, it will say us we have uh, flying 1000 feet per minute up. Is it's uh, farther down to the lower one it says we are flying 1000 feet down per minute uh, uh, these three with the ADF the middle one and the lower one they are for navigational use and I will cover them in another tutorial and uh, this uh, will show you how far you are going to the right or how far you are going to the left so um, you can see on this uh, scale how much yeah you are going to left or right uh, and it's um, recommended to not going further left or right to the market. And the last thing, this is just a clock that shows the explained in-game time. We see it's just uh, 10.30 right now. And yeah, it's good to see and to, um, to measure time, how long you're already flying. So and the last thing is uh, this, that will show you how ma much fuel is in your uh, tank. So we see there's almost it's almost half full both tanks so yeah you can see it on there and if it gets to the yellow mark it uh, you should land and refuel that's basically it the rest of the plane I will cover in another tutorial 
and for now we can start flying so yeah thank you for watching and see you next time